Good day! I am Mika Tixon, a BS and English 3 student of North Subais Campus 2. Now I will be discussing the contingency models of leadership and their types. At this point, let's discuss first what is contingency theory of leadership. So throughout history, multiple schools of thoughts have argued about the most effective leadership style. Famous among them is the contingency theory of leadership, and it states that a leader's effectiveness doesn't depend on their abilities. However, external factors like environment, culture, and social relationships influence the leadership process. As a result, contingency theories suggest that no matter how talented leaders are, they will likely struggle to meet demands at some level. For example, the COVID-19 pandemic has forced some of the most successful leaders to shut down their business ventures. True that, the contingency theory of leadership asserts that a leader's effectiveness is influenced by external factors such as the situation, environment, culture, and relationships. And it suggests that leadership styles and approaches should be adapted to fit the specific circumstances in order to achieve the best outcomes. So the three types of contingency leadership theory include Fiddler's Contingency Theory, Hersey Blanchard Contingency Theory, and Pascal Contingency Model. And now, let's discuss the significant individual who contributed to Fiddler's Contingency Theory. Fred Edward Fiddler, an Australian-American psychologist, proposed the first comprehensive contingency theory of leadership. According to Fiddler's theory, effective leadership is contingent upon the interaction between a leader's style and the favorableness of the situation. So the first type of contingency theory of leadership, we have Fiddler's contingency theory. This theory suggests that successful leaders exercise control over a situation that is influenced by three distinct factors. The Fiddler contingency model was created in the mid-1960s by Fred Fiddler, a scientist who studied the personality and characteristics of leaders. The model states that there is no one best style of leadership, instead a leader's effectiveness is based on the situation. Fiddler argued that the effectiveness of a leader's style depends on three situational factors, leader-member relations, task structure, and position power. First is leader-member relations. If you're well-liked and trusted by your team, you can communicate your ideas with greater conviction and it's easier for you to exercise effective leadership. The degree of trust and respect between the leader and their followers is an essential component for the effective leadership. The second one is task structure. When there is a structured approach to work, it means that there is a clear and well-defined plan of action in place. This allows the team to have a clear understanding of their roles, responsibilities, and goals. With a structured approach, tasks are organized and coordinated effectively, leading to higher likelihood of completing the work on time. The third one is position power. Position power refers to the authority and influence a leader's possesses within an organization or team. The more power and influence a leader has over their team, the greater control they have over the situation. This control enables leaders to effectively exercise their leadership and make decisions that can lead to successful outcomes. Position power can include factors such as the leader's formal authority, access to resources, and ability to reward or punish team members. Fiddler's contingency model also suggests two key leadership styles, task-oriented leadership and relationship-oriented leadership. Task-oriented leadership focuses on prioritizing performance and accomplishing goals. Leaders who adopt a task-oriented approach emphasize structuring work, creating plans and schedules, and ensuring the tasks are completed efficiently and effectively. They are goal-oriented and focus on organizing resources, setting clear expectations, and monitoring progress to ensure that objectives are achieved. On the other hand, relationship-oriented leadership emphasizes building positive relationships and fostering a collaborative environment. Leaders with a relationship-oriented approach prioritize teamwork, communication, and cooperation among team members. 
devalue the well-being and satisfaction of their team and invest effort in building strong relationships, trust, and mutual support. They often emphasize empathy, active listening, and promoting a positive work culture to enhance collaboration and team effectiveness. The second type of contingency theory of leadership, we have Hersey Blanchard Contingency Theory. This theory was created by two leadership experts, Paul Hersey and Ken Blanchard. The situational leadership theory suggests that no leadership style is superior to another. Instead of focusing on environmental factors, individuals should adapt their leadership styles based on activities and relationships. This theory emphasizes that different situations require different approaches to leadership in order to maximize team performance and achieve desired outcomes. The Harrison Blanchard Leadership Theory proposes different leadership styles. First is delegating style. In the delegating style of leadership, leaders empower their team members by allowing them to take responsibility and make decisions. Leaders provide guidance and support when needed, but generally trust their team members to carry out their assigned tasks independently. This style encourages autonomy and self-reliance within the team as team members have the freedom to make decisions within their areas of responsibility. The second one is participating style. The participating style of leadership involves leaders actively helping team members who struggle to meet their targets or lack confidence in carrying out their responsibilities. Leaders using this style offer support, guidance, and assistance to individuals who may need additional help or resources to succeed. They work closely with team members, providing coaching and encouragement to help them overcome obstacles and achieve their goals. The third one is ceiling style. In the ceiling style of leadership, leaders focus on effectively communicating ideas and strategies to their team in persuasive ways. They aim to gain buy-in and commitment from their team members by explaining the rationale behind decisions, providing clear expectations, and emphasizing the benefits of the proposed course of action. This style is often used in situations where changes or new initiatives need to be implemented as leaders seek to motivate and inspire their team members to increase productivity and achieve desired outcomes. The fourth one is telling style. The telling style of leadership involves providing clear direction and closely monitoring the progress of the team. Leaders using this style give explicit instructions, set specific goals, and closely supervise the work of their team members. Overall, the situational leadership theory highlights the importance of leaders being adaptable and flexible in their approach, tailoring their leadership style to the specific needs of their team members and the situation at hand. The last type of contingency model is path goal contingency model. Path goal contingency model was developed by Robert J. House, a professor of leadership and organizational behavior. The path goal theory states that a leader must shed light on the path to a goal. In other words, an effective leader is someone who provides clear direction, sets big milestone, and supports those pursuing their goal. There are various path goal leadership styles. First is directive leadership. In directive leadership, leaders clearly communicate their expectations to the team and provide guidance on how to accomplish tasks. They help team members schedule their work and set priorities to ensure efficient and effective completion of goals. The second type of path goal leadership style is supportive leadership. Supportive leadership emphasizes creating a friendly and supportive work environment. Leaders who adopt this style treat all members with equal importance and demonstrate empathy and care towards their well-being. They encourage open communication, actively listen to the members' concerns, and offer support and assistance when needed. The third one is participative leadership. Participative leadership involves consulting and involving team members in decision-making processes. Leaders who practice participative leadership seek input, suggestions, and feedback from their team members before making decisions. This leadership approach fosters a culture of continuous improvement, motivates individuals to perform at their bond, encourages innovation and growth within the team. 
Now that we've established how leadership styles change according to situations, let's explore the advantages and disadvantages of the contingency leadership theory. First, let's discuss about the advantages of this theory. The first one is about grounded in empirical research. The contingency theory of leadership is based on extensive empirical research, which lends credibility and reliability to its concepts and findings. This research foundation enhances our understandings of leadership and provides a solid basis for leadership practices. The second one is about broadened understanding of leadership. As the contingency theory broadens our understanding of leadership by recognizing that there is no one-size-fits-all approach. The last advantage of contingency theory of leadership is adaptability to changing needs. As the situational specificity of the contingency theory makes it well suited for fast-paced and dynamic environments, it emphasizes the need for leaders to adapt their style to match the evolving needs and demands of the situation, making it relevant and applicable in rapidly changing business contexts. Now, let's discuss the disadvantages of the contingency theory of leadership. First, we have lack of clear definition. One disadvantage of the contingency theory is the absence of a standard de definition of effective leadership. This can make it challenging for leaders to grasp a concrete understanding of what constitutes effective leadership, as the theory does not offer specific examples or benchmarks to learn from. The second one is about overemphasis on situational factors. The contingency theory places significant emphasis on the influence of situational factors on leadership effectiveness. This approach redounds the significance of a leader's inherent traits, skills, and abilities, which can also play a vital role in leadership success. The last disadvantage is about time-consuming decision-making. As the contingency theory acknowledges that there is no single optimal solution to a problem, leaders may spend considerable time analyzing and evaluating various situational factors before making decisions. In summary, the contingency theory of leadership offers valuable insights into the importance of situational factors and the need for adaptability in leadership. However, it has some limitations such as the lack of a clear definition of effective leadership and the potential for decision-making to be time-consuming. Nonetheless, when applied judiciously, the theory can enhance leadership understanding and guide leaders in navigating diverse situations. That would be all and thank you so much.